Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be looking specifically at the skull anatomy of mustelids. That is also known as the weasel family and includes everything from weasels, stoats, badgers, wolverines and even the honey badger. I'm specifically looking at how their skull anatomy works and how that relates to them actually hunting and bringing down prey. Before we get into this video don't forget to like and subscribe as it helps this channel a lot. Thank you. So this is the skull of a mink, which is a member of the mustelid family, which I'm sure many people are familiar with. They're a medium sized species of mustelid that resembles a weasel, only larger, and they do rival ferrets and polecat in size and have much in common. In terms of anatomical features, this skull is very much like that of most mustelids. So this is almost like a really good representative of mustelid skulls in general. It's quite a small individual, I'm guessing it's probably a young female animal, as in, in mustelids males are larger than females, so I th imagine this individual is a female, here's my hand for comparison, it's quite a small individual, a good look at the teeth, but it is a quite a small individual, so it probably is a young female animal. So when first looking at the skull of any mustelid, including a mink, of course, I think the first thing that catches your attention are these really long, sharp canine teeth, which even for their size are quite long and pronounced, very fang-like, much like those you might see on some big cats, but of course in a smaller proportion of a smaller animal. And then you have these small incisor teeth in the middle here, which are used for nibbling and pulling off small pieces of meat, while these long canine teeth are used for piercing and killing prey and also for tearing off manageable chunks of flesh when the animal is actually feeding. And then if we look here at the lower jaw which is separate from the actual skull, you can see then these back teeth here including these large molar teeth or carnassial teeth as they're referred to in, when you're describing a carnivorous mammal member of that family and they're used for shearing off pieces of meat like secateurs almost. The animal chews its head at one side and they also help in breaking bones as well, and especially with our larger carnivores, they would be useful for breaking bones, but also mink and other small mustelids can do much the same. See them on the upper jaw as well. Now, it is true that many mustelids, including badgers and pine martins, for example, here in the UK, they are omnivores. They will eat plant matter as well as meat. But many other mustelids, specifically things like weasel, stoat, mink, um, polecat, which are related to ferrets, they mostly are carnivores. So anatomically, their teeth are designed mostly for processing meat from other animals. So something about the mustelid family which is very well known is that they have for their size a very powerful bite force and when you look at the skull of a mustelid like this mink there are several features that you can examine that give you the reason as to why they have such a powerful bite force. One of which is that for the relation to their skull size they've got a relatively short jaw. Now for smaller mustelids like weasels and stoats this is actually even shorter than this animal but even so, compared to the rest of the skull, it's quite a short muzzle. Now, when the animal actually bites down on something, because this jaw is relatively short, the force has less distance to travel. So by the time it ends up to where these big canine teeth are, just here, the force is not going to be so reduced because it has less distance to travel. So by the time it makes its way to the teeth, the force will still have quite a lot of energy, which is one of the reasons, if you look at it in terms of physics, why this animal has such a strong bite. Now, the other reason for this animal having such a strong bite is the length of the skull. You can see for its size, the mink, along with many other mustelids, has a very long cranium. And if you look at the top of the skull here, you can see this ridge that runs along the top of the skull. Now, this is a feature which is seen in many carnivorous mammals such as dogs and canids and bears and even in gorillas and it's called the sagittal crest which is basically a ridge of bone 
which acts as an anchor point for very large jaw muscles. And you can see here along the side of the skull, this area here would have been attachment points for large muscles around the orbital sinuses and the and these large areas where the temporalis muscles on this animal would be very well pronounced. So that's another reason why this animal has such a strong bite is because it has a lot of muscle attachments in this area that enable it to generate much higher forces. And of course, another reason, of course, are these teeth, which of course, for the size of the animal, are particularly long, very long, sharp canine teeth. And if anyone who studied physics knows that force is often a lot greater when you generate it along a smaller surface area. So combining all that we've just discussed, the greater muscle mass on the skull, the relatively short jaws, by the time the force makes its way to these long canine teeth, the force is very concentrated in a precise area. So getting bitten by a mustelid like this mink is especially damaging because of these features and these long canine teeth are very effective weapons. So just to give you an idea of how mustelids like a mink would kill its prey, here is the skull of a grey squirrel which represents basically the skull of a rodent or other mammal that a mustelid might be attacking. Now, when mustelids like a wink or kill their prey, they often do this classic manoeuvre where they jump on the back of their prey and they wrap it tightly to their underside by gripping its body with all four limbs and they have sharp claws as well to hold on tightly. And they almost always kill with this method where they bite the back of the animal's skull. Hold on. They bite the back of the animal's skull with their canine teeth extended like this and their intention is to basically paralyze or kill the animal as quickly as they can by driving these long canine teeth into the brain case and this area often where the skull meets the spine where they can actually if with enough force of these long canine teeth they can crunch through the brain case of the animal and kill it instantly or bite through the spinal column and paralyze the animal so it can't turn around and fight back if you haven't noticed, this squirrel itself has got some pretty large incisor teeth of its own and they are very capable of turning around and biting a mink back if they are attacked. But by using this technique where they can bypass their own prey's teeth and claws and they'll sink these fangs into the back of the skull of the animal, they can terminate it or paralyze it very quickly. And it's often how, in this method, they can subdue animals much larger than themselves. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this short video talking about the skull anatomy of a mink and other mustelids and seeing how they're such effective little predators. There are more videos like this to come in the future, so until then I shall see you in the next one.